All right, welcome back to My Mom's Basement. It's Robbie Fox, and I am here with Games We Play. Emin from Games We Play. Just hours before you're going on stage at Madison Square Garden to open out, up for Fall Out Boy. Yes. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling very nervous because, like, you know, we're doing all this stuff, and I'm really excited. I want to do all this stuff. I have a very long routine to get absolutely di- lasered in for the show. Every show, you got a like a pre-show routine. Yeah, it's not a very serious routine, but I need to do it. What does it consist of? Uh, an ice bath. Um, Are you fucking with me? No. You do an I- ice bath before every show? Yeah. Well, I do an ice bath, and we were cleaning up the ice bath last show. It popped and flooded the bathroom. That's that's bad. But it, it wasn't even like it wasn't even like it was like. <laughs> wave. It, it was really bad. I thought yeah. I thought my photographer was gonna drown. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I do an ice bath. I make some really weird sounds with my mouth, like vocal warm ups. Yeah, but very weird ones. Um. And then I listen to LMFAO for about forty five minutes. Are they your pre show music every show? It's just like two thousand tens. You know, LMFAO, okay. Black Eyed Peas, a lot of sing alongs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, I was telling you before we started the podcast that. That my last show was horrible. Yeah, Baltimore. And yeah, never going back there. <laughs> I'm um, but that coincidentally was the only show where we didn't, you know, because the ice bath was popped. No routine. The routine was thrown off, so the show was thrown off. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was. It was wild. But you've been on the tour for a little bit now. Yep. How have the rest of the dates gone? Um. Okay. So I've been on the, the Fall Out Boy tour for for four shows now yep. um and arenas are really weird because like i'm used to either headlining like 300 cap rooms 400 cap rooms or opening for you know like bands like all time low like like 2000 2500 and i feel like in that in those rooms i know what to do mm-hmm. but in arenas it's just like moms you know yeah and, that like listen to the radio and listen casually you know and i would say that they're not like looking for new punk rock bands to like become super fans of you know so the arenas are really weird but specifically like this leg i just released a new album and i'm playing some of those songs and i think we just like figured it out except in baltimore yeah. that that was not <laughs> that um but like yeah it's been really cool and people like put their lights up and um you know, doors are an hour before we play so by the end of the set like the arena's packed it's, yeah. it's really cool i was going to ask about that because Obviously, like you could play to ten thousand people, but if it's a twenty thousand seat arena, right. it's gonna look fifty percent full. Is that weird for like even mm. the beginning of your set? Is it a weird dynamic to try to get those people moving? The actual funny thing is, I can't see anybody. Oh, it's like at all. an ocean. No, I mean it's just like when there's so much light on the stage. Yeah, the crowd just looks like you're playing to a black wall. Okay. Um, which is super weird, but is that good for your nerves? Does that calm your nerves a little bit, or no? Um. I don't know. Generally, the people in the front are like games we play fans. Yeah. Um, that like know I'm playing first, so they get there and they're in the front. Um, so like if I could see people, I see that front row and they're usually like singing along, which is really cool. Um, I don't know. I like feel really, really confident this tour, and I think that I because I went in so confident, like everybody's been liking it. I love that. Yeah. So I want to go back and get the games we play origin. I love yeah. telling origin stories on this podcast. Yeah. How did everything start for you? Yeah. Um, my pops was in a band, uh, in like a little hardcore band. Um, oh, in a hardcore band. Yeah. Real cool dad. Yeah. It actually played with Fall Out Boy back in the day. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, That's which, really cool. What a full circle moment. Yeah. Um, which is so funny. So like, you know, he brought me to shows growing up, like punk rock shows, like he put me on to bands like Blink and Newfound Glory and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I just started like I was like, oh, I want to play shows because I was singing a lot at church back in the day. Okay. Um, so I was like, oh, I want to play like punk rock shows. And, and this is Nashville. This is in Miami, Florida. You grew up in Miami. Yeah. My oh, whole family is wow. like Cuban and Puerto Rican. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I did that. And and then I was like, Dad, I got to play a show. We booked a show. Um, I had two songs written. I didn't know how to play the guitar. Okay. And the show was in a month, so I learned how to play guitar for that show. Um, and from then, like, I was just, you know, playing shows around Miami, like, going to high schools every every day, honestly, and, like, just giving, like, these little printouts that say, games we play, listen to me on Spotify. Um, and this is, like, what age are you? Like, while you're in high school as 14. well? Well, wow. I dropped out. Cool. Um, 
when I was when I was 14, I just left school. Um, I don't really know why. I mean, like a lot of it was for music, but I just I just didn't like school. Weren't feeling it. Yeah. I wish I could have done the same. Yeah, my parents were really cool for that. Yeah. Um, well, um, your dad in a band, maybe he saw the vision. You know. Yeah, and I was also this has nothing to do with games you play. I was also like playing drums a lot. Um, so I'm a drummer, and I was getting like really good at drums really quickly. And my dad was like, maybe if I take him out of school, and he just like focuses on drums. Yeah. Um. So I got taken out of school and I stopped playing drums. <laughs> um, <laughs> As you do, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so I did that for a while. And then basically I put a couple songs out and then I moved to Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, did the same thing in Nashville and that was around 17, so like three years in. Um, and I was like working at Target. And basically I was the cart guy at Target and I would be like, in the freaking parking lot and any like pretty girl in the parking lot i would give still do the same thing i would like give stickers to that was like my way of promoting my band and like yeah. flirting with girls um it's actually how it's i met my wife in. yeah really yeah. give her a sticker yeah i did that's awesome um yeah and you know i did it in nashville for a while it yeah i, I just like had like some random people coming to shows no, no like like real like visual movement but i did it for so long yeah and then I moved to L.A. and I was like, maybe L.A. will help me. And this was 22 years old. And I remember trying the same thing, but now just with like TikTok, like I was making I was making TikTok videos. But then I was also still doing like the flyering thing. And this is like where it kind of came full circle. So um, there's this artist, Jaden Hostler, you know, yep. that is. Yep. So he played a show at the Roxy. And I remember printing 500 games we play CDs and. Uh, this is like the day I moved to Los Angeles and I stayed out the outside the uh, the Jaden show and I just kept giving CDs out. And then like two days later, I made a post on TikTok about just my life story about how I've been doing music for a while that my wife and I moved out to uh, L.A., all this stuff. And the post blew up like like 15 million views is huge. Yeah. And then I started getting comments. It was like, wait. And from like other artists, like pretty big artists, and they were like, didn't you give me something at the Jaden show? And I was like, oh, this is like working right now. Like, um, even so more impressive that you gave CDs and that yeah. people were like, I still have a six CD changer in my car. I could yeah. toss that in or something. Yeah. yeah. You would think nowadays it's just an airdrop. Yeah. No, it was a CD. I don't think anybody listened to it because nobody really has a way yeah. to listen to CDs <laughs> That's what in I mean. car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, the, the second I moved to LA, it kind of just all clicked and I was, I guess, I just got enough practice doing it with no result that like the second I moved to LA, it like it worked, you know? Yeah. And, uh, from then I went on tour. I put out an album two weeks ago and now we're playing Madison Square Garden tonight. It's crazy. I love the yeah. backwards nature of like you having to learn guitar to play your first show. Oh yeah. Because we have like a fake pop punk band here at Barstool and we had a very similar story. We put out one song just yeah. we thought it'd be funny if we do a parody song, make it sound like a pop punk song. Yeah. And our boss loved it so much, he just booked us a headlining show at Irving Plaza. Really? And we were like, we've literally never played music together. Like, really? Like, we just recorded one song as a joke. Yeah. And he's like, just play that song, like, 12 times. That'll be the show. And we were like, I don't think we can charge tickets and yeah. do that. So yeah. we just learned a bunch of covers, and that was the start of the band. Did you play the show? We did, yeah. Was it packed? It was packed. We almost sold it out, yeah. So you're in a meme pop punk band. I am in a meme pop punk band, yeah. I saw that in your bio. Is that the meme pop punk It is. Band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not in a serious pop punk band? Not at all. But you Our shows are 90% covers. Okay. And then we've got a couple originals that, you know, poke fun at the genre in fun ways. What do you cover? Everything. Blink. Okay. All Time Low. Green Day. Okay. You name it. Every classic. Some 41. Yeah. Simple Plan. Fall cool. Out Boy. Yeah. Yeah. And you learned how to play guitar for that. So, no. Here was the thing. We all played instruments prior. Okay. That's why we did the song in the first place. But not like... None of us super seriously. I played yeah. bass in pop punk bands growing up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the plan was just do one music video, then do a behind the music on our dramatic breakup. Mm -hmm. where people were like, just keep doing music videos. So it's been like seven years of that. Sick. Similar though, I, when you said like we had to learn how to play guitar to play the show. Yeah. It's like we literally had to learn how to be a band to play the show. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, you know, above like playing music and writing music like what i like to do is i like to play shows um, oh of course and the it, most fun thing in the world yeah and you saw did you see me live in columbus i did um i don't i don't i hope you got this vibe that i like really enjoy performing and put a lot into it definitely um so 
That yeah. was a that was a really fun show. That whole all time low show was like you kick the day off on a great note, and then it was May Day and all time low and everything. Like yeah. that was a good vibe. And one of the things I remembered the most about that was how much you were trying to maybe embarrass your brother while you're on stage. Yeah, well, it's not really embarrassed. I'm trying to get my brother locked in. Okay. Um, I have, <laughs> I have, uh, I have a younger brother who I, I'm, I'm five eleven. I have a younger brother who's six five, yeah. and I say on stage that he's way less, way like, worse looking than me. But my brother's jacked. And he's got <laughs> he's got a different dad. Like my my brother's a good looking guy, and he's a pretty like, like green guy, like new to everything, yeah. and like doesn't care about material stuff and he's like never had a girlfriend he's like never kissed a girl so like i have a bit where i bring him on stage i was gonna say i thought that was just a bit that's true uh so it was true at one point it was true <laughs> when i started the bit he yeah. ended up kissing my sister's best friend well, thank god i mean he goes on a rock tour i would hope he got a yeah. kiss. no i mean like like transparently wild amounts of dms Oh, I'm sure. Horrific DMs. <laughs> like, like, it's crazy. Um, but, yeah, so, like, I bring my brother out, and basically every tour I go on, I try to up the antics of, like, what this Ethan bit is. So he learned how to play music for this tour, oh. and he's playing Madison Square Garden tonight without really knowing how to play bass. That's unbelievable. But does Madison Square Garden for you, like, growing up in Jersey, yeah. going to shows there, yeah. it obviously has, like, that aura. It feels bigger. Mm -hmm. Does it feel bigger to you than the other arenas you've played? To, to be honest, I feel like tonight is, like... I, I played Red Rocks once yep. um, with All Time Low, and that was awesome. And just, like, tonight kind of feels, like, different. Like, tonight, not than the All Time Low thing, just, like, it, everything's kind of, like, leading up to this for me. Yeah. Um... I don't know. I know that, like, you know, I acknowledge that, like, this is something that, like, most people, like, try to do, like, play Madison Square yeah. Garden, you know? It's, like, the end goal for a lot of people. Yeah, and and tonight, like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, and how am I going to do this in the most M way possible? I'm going to bring – I'm going to take – Eight minutes out of my 20 minute set to try to find uh, my brother or girlfriend. <laughs> and then I might like I, I'm debating. I'm still talking to my band, but like I might play it in underwear tonight. Just like just oh, yeah. just do something stupid. But yeah, tonight I'm like really you go nervous. full chili peppers just to sock on the junk. My my it, <laughs> mine isn't big enough to hold a sock. You might have to rubber band it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still probably not big enough. <laughs> um, I could probably just not wear anything to be fine. Yeah. Nobody would see. No. Um, yeah. Put a guitar in front of it. If yeah. Anything. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, today today's gonna be really weird, and like I'm going straight to the venue after this, and I'm really nervous to see. Um, hopefully, it works. New York's New York's cool because New York's weird and cool because there's like a lot of cool people who go to shows. They're like, trying to be too cool, like a lot too of cool people, to move. Yeah, I say put your hands up, and they like they're like this, and it's like yeah. Um, you're not too cool to put your hands up at a pop punk show. Yeah, it, it it's gonna be cool though, and Fall Out Boy fans are dope, and um, I got like a lot of fans from the All Time Low stuff. And like I'm, I'm really excited to, to, just do it. It's it's crazy, and I'm gonna try to do it in the most M and way possible. How did you get on uh, Pete Wentz and Patrick Slump's radar in the first place? I have no idea. You uh, heard from them one day. They they heard a game we play. I can't, yeah. I mean, I went. I posted that video, and then um, I was having meetings with people like labels and managers and stuff. And I went to one, and just Pete was there. I didn't know. Um, I remember like texting. Texting my girl, and I was like, P Wentz is right here. Pretty intimidating, like, yeah. I'm I'm being serious. Like, you're three feet from me. I I was walking up to Pete. I was like, P Wentz is right here. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it was very weird. And that one was so funny because that was the day after I posted that video. And some guy, like, freaked out. Like, on the street, he's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, like, I thought he was, like, talking to Pete. And he's like, you're Emin from Games We Play. In and front of Pete? Yeah, it was oh, so that's cool. Huge. It was so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Pete was like, dude, that's legit. Yeah, and I was he's like, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, You're like, yeah, I'm famous. That happens all the time. It, yeah, it was really cool. And, you know, since that day, I would say Pete and I have been, like, like pretty close. That's and, awesome. Like, he uh, has his, I don't know if this is the right phrase, but he has his foot in a lot of the game. That's not the right phrase at all. <laughs> uh, he is very involved in yeah. pretty much everything I do. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool to hear. Yeah. And he was also at the Denny's show, which I was incredibly jealous of. When I saw the videos from that, I've wanted to play at Denny's since I, I saw the original viral video, of course. Yeah. Um. So I did play a show at Denny's. Um. Basically, like, there's, there's, you, you know, you've seen the video where the guy's like, what the 
fuck is up, Danny? So Am I to say the F word? Of course. Okay. Yeah. We've played Bojangles. Really? Bojangles parking lots in the same way. We just like, we want to play Denny's. Really? And Bojangles was like, we'll pay you to play here. We were like, fuck yeah, Bojangles. Really? I, yeah, I don't think I got paid to play Denny's at all. <laughs> um, to be honest, my record label was the one who hooked that I up. I pay to play at Denny's. I think that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was cool. And like, you know, we were worried that too many people were going to show up. Because this is right around the time of like that video. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really announce it till the or it was announced, but we didn't really tell the address till the day of. Um, and like we packed out the Denny's Pete was there and like Pete was crowd surfing. And <laughs> yeah. obviously because we announced that, um, or I announced that I was on Pete's label and a lot of fall boy fans came and it was really weird to like see Pete Wentz crowd surfing at my debt, my <laughs> Denny's headline show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was, I think maybe the first time that I became aware of you immediately, really? those videos got sent in the pup punk group chat. Really? And everyone's like, this is fucking awesome. We need to do something like this. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know if you've seen, like, I feel like a lot of pop punk bands, like you said, Bojangles, like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like since that, um, that original Denny's video has been a thing. Like a lot of, Bands have like replicated it with their own ways. Like, Strange venues. Yeah, Waffle House, yep. IHOP. But I'm really honored to like be the other person that played Denny's. You know, Blink 182 did too. They did for like an Anthem Part Three promo. Right? Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, Mark actually hit the "What the fuck is up, Denny's?" Yeah, you I have to. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do it as cool as him. He did it cooler. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if they saw it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. They could have. I'm pretty honored to be. The one of the three bands that played a Denny's along with Blink One Eighty Two. They should put like a uh, an employee of the month style plaque for like this yes. artist has played this Denny's. Well, you know, I got the follow after Denny's, and I was pretty. Oh, pretty happy. there you go. Uh, Denny's Diner follows me. They don't give us f they don't they don't give us free stuff on the road. I you hope should, they do. You should get like a black card, like a Denny's black. Yes. Card. Show up to any Denny's, flash it, and it's like free eggs. We go to Denny's all the time, but to be transparent, I haven't asked. I okay. feel like if I asked, they'd be like, yeah. You Probably. Know? Yeah. What's your like number one tour food when you're on the road? Oh, it's really weird because I'm trying to like take care of myself. So like sometimes it's a protein bar. Yeah, it's a little lame. Yeah, but sometimes not very rock and roll. Sometimes I'm like a bad boy. And do you like, have anything fun on the on the rider? No, no, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Like um, like hopefully you'll see it tonight. Like I have nothing to give you. You know, <laughs> um, like I have. Coconut oil popcorn. I have coconut oil. Yeah, popcorn. I have coconut oil popcorn, seaweed crisps, and protein bars. Dude, what? The yeah, hell? and then I have kombucha, Celsius, and water. Yeah, you got nothing. It's it's messed up. Yeah, and like you know, once we had like guests backstage, you're like, hey, do you have anything to drink? And I was like, no, no. Yeah. And I could like <laughs> you. That's why they give you the rider. There's yeah. usually like a budget for the rider. Yeah, I'm probably like a tenth in. Um, my rider's always just saltines and ginger ale because I get real nervous and I get a tummy ache. Really? Yeah. It's yeah. All equally lame, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's funny because you'll see, you'll see me on stage and you'll see me with my band on stage and I feel like you'll be like, oh, these guys are like, these guys are like, like to have fun. But, backstage but, but they don't. <laughs> yeah, not like that. Like our version of fun is like blasting black eyed peas. I got a feeling, you okay, know? Yeah. Um, Tonight's completely tonight. sober, Let's you know, it up. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was up with the Walmart picture the other day with just as many bags of oh. Tostino's chips as I've ever seen? Oh, dude, I have a thing with my friends where like, I just like commit to the bit, you know, Okay. like fully. Yeah. Um, and I was like, it, it was my little brother's birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> mind you, I'm going to be transparent. I, in my personal bank account, I have like $186. Okay. Okay. And, um, and you said, let's buy as many Tostino's chips as Walmart has. Well, I got the hint of lime and I don't know if you remember, <laughs> um, maybe somebody, maybe somebody who's watching this can like confirm hint of lime went away for a long time. I, I believe that's right. Yeah. yeah, it did. I like the hint of lime and no, no, they're the best. Yeah. They're, the best. <laughs> they're real good. They're also extremely calorically dense and that's not why they're on our rider. Um, <laughs> but so we, I got a hint of lime. I was like, you know what? Just in case these go away, like I'm going to get some more, um, and then we bought 20 bags, mm -hmm. and then I bought uh, – because I don't drink, and my little brother doesn't drink, and uh, we bought, like, N.A. whiskey or something. <laughs> it just tastes like water with cinnamon in it. See, N.A. whiskey, that's – like, I don't really understand N.A. beer because I don't, I don't like the taste of beer. N.A. Yeah. whiskey, like, that's the next level. Oh, of, it was like, bad. What are you doing? It kind of hurt my chest. That doesn't surprise me. Well, and, and you know, <laughs> like, my – some people on the crew who who – do drink alcohol they're like this tastes like pretty similar 
Um, so we got we got NA Coronas, we got NA whiskey, and we got fucked up. Yeah, I believe that. Wildly, <laughs> we open we opened one bag of Tostitos. Out of the twenty. Yeah, I have. He- I'm like stocked in the car. You should have brought a hint of lime today. You should just be giving out those out to everyone. I. I probably will do that on the headline tour. Just open a bag, you know. Hands of lime, yeah. Throw them. Yeah. Well, when we did Bojangles, they gave us biscuits to throw out. And I'll tell you what, Bojangles biscuits—they're nice and crumbly. Really? You throw a biscuit out, you hit a line drive at somebody, it'll yeah. explode when it hits them in the face. Really? Yeah, it's like a headshot. We were doing that all tour. It was Sounds great. extremely safe. They're soft enough. Okay. <laughs> you know, you can't take an eye out with a biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least I don't know. We didn't. So. Is there videos of your Bojangles show? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were fun. They was were it, really fun. Did were like people singing along and stuff? Totally. We Hell packed yeah. the parking, and we didn't know if anyone would show up because it's like BYOB, like Bojangles isn't yeah. providing drinks for everyone. Yeah, and nobody showed up until like five minutes beforehand. Really? So we were like, to be transparent, we were texting our social people, being like, "Do not tweet videos of this show. <laughs> it's gonna look <laughs> really bad." Yeah. And then like five minutes later, we were like, "Make sure you tweet every video of this show you get." Yeah. Everyone just showed up on a bus. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, yeah. I do that stuff all the time. Like like where I get really nervous about something I'm about to do. I remember um, I played like a London headline show and it was five minutes before and I didn't like go outside to see the line. I was like, is anybody here? Is anybody here? Like, should we play this so show? The biggest worry. Yeah. yeah and, and my brother's like, Emin, what are you, it's, it's sold out. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, yeah. I get really weird about if people like my band or not, or if people are going to show up, even if yeah. like the show sold out, I'm like really worried about that, about my headline tour. No, um, they'll show up for the headline tour. Super nervous. I, like, think, I think they'll show up. I'll be there. R- really? Definitely. Which one? When you come to the East Coast. Okay. Anywhere on the East Coast. All of them? You're doing uh, New York, yeah? I am. Gramercy Theater It's my biggest show. Boom. We played Gramercy Theater. It was so much fun. Really? Like one of my favorite venues we've ever played. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm really nervous for the New York show. Um, I think tonight will help like introduce some people to the band for the Gramercy Theater show. And then tomorrow I'm like playing like a emo night. And yeah. I'm going to do my brother bit there. I'm going to throw him <laughs> yep. in the crowd and say, do what you want with him. Um, I'm really nervous for the Gramercy Theater show. It will be the biggest games you play headline to date. Um, it's a good vibe in there. Yeah? I think you'll like it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Especially the way the venue is set up. Like there's a, seats in the back. Really? So immediately the floor will pack. Cool. And it'll look huge. Like, Sick. Yeah. Cool. It'll be great. Dope. Um, the album, Life's Going Great, is yeah. awesome. It's out now. You could stream it on Spotify. Did you what listen you, to it? I did. Okay. What are your favorite songs to play from it live? Okay. Um, like, was it written? Were the songs written to be played live because they have the energy of yeah, like a live performance? I would say, thank you. I would say, "Life's Going Great" is like a very loud album. Yes. Um, like, yeah. I mean, my favorite song to play live is a song called "Naked." Um, I wrote, I wrote "Naked" about, you know, I don't know if if you're like this or anybody who's watching is like this. I'm a little insecure about this mm-hmm. sometimes to the point where if I find myself in a situation where I'm gearing up to engage in sexual intercourse yep. i may not want to yeah just happens. because i'm like what if what if you don't like this mm-hmm. you know so that's what naked's about and um i would say naked is probably my favorite song to play live yeah um you know that's one where i bring my little brother out okay. and i just find it <laughs> ironic like my my brother's ripped and like he's shirtless <laughs> playing the bass and i'm playing a song about not liking the way you look um so naked is really fun the opening track on the album the end i love the opening track yeah yeah hell yeah i love an album opener like an album opener a concert opener yeah there's something about kicking things off that like i'm inclined to immediately like yeah i like those songs more i feel like did it It might be the blink fan in me as well yeah like blink opens every album with an amazing song i would say blink 182 opened enema of the state perfectly Anima of the State, dude, feeling this is the perfect opener. Yeah, like, a- yeah. Every, every, sin- I mean, Anthem Part 2 is the, yeah. the perfect opener. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I've never thought about that. punk thing for me where I'm just like, I yeah. want an album to kick off on a big, energetic, crazy note. Yeah. And uh, I kick off this album with like a really ridiculous song. Yep. Um, just saying, saying like stupid shit in this yep. song. Um, but there's that bass slide in the beginning. I was like, maybe this will be cool. And it's called The End. Maybe it's funny because it's track one. Um, but yeah, I would say my favorite song to play live is Naked. What were your like sonic influences when you're making the album? Were there albums that you said, I want this to sound like that? Yeah. So there's a thing in music right now and it's really good. Some of my songs are like this, but like, um, you know, everything sounds really big and everything sounds really processed and everything sounds really perfect. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, like, I really admire records that kind of, like, have flaws on them. And for for people watching, like, you can record 
music just like straight into a computer now with no amp, with nothing. Um, and I was like, I want this to sound real. Like, I want you to hear the dirtiness of the amps. I want to hear real drums. Like, like a lot of the songs you're listening to, and it's fine. Like, my songs have this too. I just didn't want to do it for this record. Don't have drums on them, you know? Yeah. Um, so, like, my influence for this was, like, I want to sound like a rock band. And I love like, that. Like, it's live and it's plugged in, you know? Yeah, that's probably why I got that feeling from the album. Like, was this written to be played live? Yeah. Because you get that everything's not quantized to shit no it's not you get the human feel of it yeah and like quantizing is like for those of you who don't know quantizing is like lining up every note on the grid on the time making it like computerized essentially taking the soul out of it yeah but which is good like you know some things need to be that way oh yeah but an album like this like hell it it helps it so much not to have that yeah you know dragging it down and you listen to a lot of like my favorite music is like 2000s music you listen to the blink stuff um you listen to like all american reject stuff and it's like it has that live feel. The real, the, the drums aren't so big that it's like, yeah, it, it it sounds amazing, but it doesn't sound amazing. If that makes sense, yeah. And that's like what I was going for. My brother's a drummer. I have a brother twelve years older than me that raised me on every kind of music I like. Really, it's basically from him. And because I grew up with a brother's drummer, yeah. I feel like I have a good ear for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I hear fake drums in a song, yeah, it's not like the, it's ruined the song for me, but it's just like a oh, they're using yeah. fake drums for that one. Yeah. Like, I like it so much more when I could tell, oh, that's a drummer playing drums right there. That's a kit mic'd up perfectly. Yeah. And I was really sad because, like, um, a lot of this record got – oh, 90 percent of this record was finished um, by myself in London with the producer, right? And yeah. I recorded every instrument. And the we added, like, three more songs at the end, the more positive songs. Um, and there was somebody else playing drums on those because I couldn't get out to London again. And I was so sad because I was like – I really wanted to play drums on this. Like playing drums on my music is one of my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. Do you play all the instruments otherwise on this album? Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I would say I'm pretty bad at playing the piano. I don't think there's any piano on this. If there is, it's just like little notes that I hit. Do you do you have a favorite instrument to record? Is it drums? Drums. Yeah. All, also, like I hate it. Like basically, like w coming like like doing the thing with um, no computerized stuff. Mm -hmm takes a lot of work because you need to redo it it can't be fixed yeah um so yeah i remember like posting on my instagram i fucking hate recording <laughs> music i ask people that all the time like do you like the studio process and i feel like most artists are just like of course it's the best yeah and i'm like i've been in a studio yeah a lot of it's like boring you're yeah. waiting for things to happen yeah sometimes it's really fun if something's organically flowing and yeah. you're, you know coming together like that a lot of the times it's not the best process yeah it's strenuous well also the thing with you know recording every instrument most bands function that like the drummer comes in mm -hmm. lays out the drums then it's guitar part right i'm like soaking wet because I'm playing the drums and I had to do it a hundred times and he's like all right guitar he was British we got to do guitar <laughs> and then we did guitar for eight hours it's like nine o'clock at night he's like ready to do vocals and it was it's like really strenuous but you know now that it's out it, it was like so worth it and I'm sure it's so like almost satisfying to have the complete product that you oh played God. everything on it's like a McCartney thing yeah I mean no dude I hate recording music yeah mainly because like I mess up you know, mm -hmm. I hate recording music, but that I have these songs, I'm like, that was awesome. They're just like in stone now. Yeah. This album is always yeah. going to be able to found on Spotify, vinyl. Like, yeah, it's just in history now. Yeah. um, Yeah. I hope that's something I get to do like vinyl. Like I'm getting into recording record. I mean, what is the word? Collecting records. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> am I. <laughs> yeah. Like that is uh, that's something that I'm like really enjoying. Wildly yeah. expensive. So expensive. Yeah. To the point where like I say I'm collecting records, I buy one a year. Okay. It's yeah. like when all, when all time low drops a new fucking yeah. variant. I'm like, all right, I guess I need that one for are, completionist purposes. Yeah. Are you like a big all time low fan? Huge all time low fan. Yeah. Really? I got this hat here. What What is it? The all time low skull. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell they were yeah. like, they're still my all time favorite. No really? pun intended. Yeah. All time favorite. Yep. I like growing up wasn't the biggest all time low fan, and I went on tour with them. Oh, motherfucker. They, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went on tour with them, and they are my, like, they are one of my favorite bands ever. Like, they're unbelievable. Yeah. And I just, like, I have to say thank you to them. Probably, you know, like, w up there with Fall Out Boy, like, no band has helped me out more than all time low. Um, they play such big shows and they bring me out all the time and yeah. like they're such nice guys and I honestly like wouldn't like be doing this tour and like tickets wouldn't be selling if all time low didn't help me out. 
That's awesome. Shout yeah. out all time low. They're Best my boys. people. Yeah. Best people. The whole the whole team. Yeah. The whole, whole all time low team. Yeah. All right. My final question for you, which I ask to every artist and musician that comes on the show. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge Oasis fan. Yeah. And Noel Gallagher once said he summed up everything he ever wanted to say with three songs: rock and roll star, okay, live forever, and cigarettes and alcohol. He says after that, I'm just repeating myself with different words. Those are all beautiful songs. Beautiful songs. So if you had to pick three songs that you've written that sum up mm. everything you've wa- ever wanted to say, which would would you select? Okay, so I'll say this isn't one of my favorite I've made, but like thematically with who I am, get a job is like a really big thing. Great one. Um, then I would say the most Emin song I've ever made is Naked. <laughs> I have Just very your personality. I'm being wildly transparent. I've gotten naked so many times and not, you know, gearing up for sexual intercourse. Nice. And I got a little insecure and I put my clothes back on, you know, yeah. not my vibe. Um, and then the other one, um, probably the first song on the album, the end. Oh no, no, I take it back. Girl shaped crater. There you go. Because there is, we'll like, give you a mulligan on that one. <laughs> there is, <laughs> there is like, there is like that thing about me, you know, Oasis is like that where their music sounds real as shit. Yeah. And like there's acoustics everywhere. And if you listen really closely, there's mess ups on the record. Yep. Um, and I would say that Girl Shaped Crater, um, along with a lot of the songs in the record, has acoustic and is like, you know, m- a more raw song. Yep. Um, and that's a big part of me, like listening to real music and like, so it's Girl Shaped, Naked, because I have a small penis, and <laughs> um, get a job. You know? Those are great three. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Good luck tonight. MSG. It's going to be a great show. It's going to go great. Thank you. The people are going to love you. You're coming, right? I'll be there. Okay. And uh, the people are going to love you when you come back to Gramercy. I don't think you should be worried about that show. You should play guitar with me on Gramercy. Dude, I would love I play bass, but bass. I would love to. Okay. Let's do you it. You tell me. I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Sick. All right. Hell yeah. Thanks. All right. There we go.